G'day crew, Todd from Toxic Garage Customs, and welcome back. Good to see you, hope you're well. I'm well, thanks for asking. So this is uh, episode four of the Shed Fine Datsun 1000 Will It Run series, and you probably figured by the title, yes it will. So we got it to run last episode in fact, but this time we get it to run more better -er. Better -er. Better. It runs better -er. So we chuck a new carby on it. Well, when I say new, one we found in a cardboard box and we make it run. So by the end of this episode, this thing will be purring like a kitten, almost. So let's have a look, jump on, follow how we go. See you at the end of the video. Okay, so we'll drain the oil on this. Just taking the degreaser out of the drain tray. And I want to see what the oil looks like. Now, if you've never changed the oil on a car, it's pretty easy. Um, got the sump, which holds all the oil. And you can see distinctly leaking. There's new oil running down there. So no doubt we need to put some seals and things in this, but I just want to get some oil in at the moment. We can change it again at a later date. So that's the sump plug just there. Looks like it's pretty big, um, I guess 21 mil or shifter. And that's the oil filter, which I've got to say is bigger than the oil filter on some modern day six cylinder or V8 cars. It's massive. So hopefully it does a fair bit of filtration. Now, as I said, I have got an oil filter for this in the back somewhere, which is good. I don't have any oil, not here, because it's all at the new joint. But we will go and buy four litres of oil at some point, pop it in here. And because it's not going to have any oil in it at the moment, I'll leave the cap off and I'll put a piece of tape there that says no oil so that I don't forget and start it without oil. So we'll drain this out. I suspect it's going to have a little bit more than it's supposed to. The fact that the car is jacked up at the back, the sump plugs at the back of the sump, we should get pretty much every drop out. So I'm going to take that off, let it drain out, and then we'll move the tray across below the oil filter. We'll take that off bit of oil will run down but it shouldn't be too bad and then we sit the oil filter upside down on that little bit at the back there and it drains the oil out of the oil filter and then we can typically put the oil filter into the cardboard box that the new one came in and dispose of it environmentally friendly in the bin and the oil we dispose of in an appropriate manner too which I generally put back into the bottle that the new oil came in and then take it to an oil recycling depot Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so my battery went flat, but in the meantime, I decided to go through um, the stuff that was in the back of the car there. And I'd been through some of it, but not all of it. Now, amongst these boxes, there's all sorts of goodies, but what I have found, a couple of intake manifolds and a carby. Um, there's all sorts of lights and mirrors and spare ashtrays. That bag just there is full of brand new packets of nuts and bolts, like all different sizes. Uh, this is a variety of stuff that I've just been going through, sorting out and throwing. Some of it's related, some of it's not. Good stuff here. This box is full of brake pads and oil filters. This one was in there. That's a 1000. That's what I need. Now this is a bit of crap that I've been throwing out. A bit more crap been sorting through. Some stuff to keep. Look at this, a couple more carbies. And what else did I find? I found some ignition points for a Datsun 1000. And a Subaru as it turns out. And an air cleaner. As it turns out, I actually had a bottle of oil, which I've put into it was some 20W50 I had, new lawn stuff, so I put the old oil into that bottle. And this is the oil filter that came out of that box. It had the plastic on, so I've taken it off, so brand new. Um, 
So yeah, got to pop this on. So just wanted to show you this. Uh, you always run a smear of oil just around the rubber o-ring around the outside just to make it seal properly. So I'm just going to pop that on. You wouldn't believe it also when I was going through all the stuff. I found this. A compression tester. Not quite what I have, but it's a compression tester. So if I get really excited, I'll give this thing a compression test. So that screws into the spark plug hole, you crank it over about half a dozen times, and you see what it reads. And ideally you see a pretty high number, and they're all the same. We'll wait and see for that one. So I just pulled this tailgate out. This is off a sedan or a little two-door thing. Um, I like this Datsun 1000, which is good because my badge is missing. The little, the little um, key and the handle. I like this Nissan full automatic. This must be from the full powerhouse option. Can you imagine that, a 1000cc auto? They must have been rocking the streets. Now what else is in here is one of these little tune-up kit things. Uh, the dwell meter and all that sort of stuff haven't opened it. I think I've said before, people keep giving me things like that all the time. This is the fuel tank. That's it. No, I'm not kidding. That's it. That's the fuel tank. So it's padded on the outside. So presumably all this stuff comes off somehow, carefully. And that's it. It looks like it goes down into the wheel well a little bit. So at least it's not hard to get to. So uh, when the time comes, we'll pull that out, give it a clean, maybe a reseal, and we'll run with it. Okay. I think what I'm also going to do, probably now, is just try and chuck one of those other carbies on here. Um, don't think it can be any worse. It might be better. And if I didn't mention it earlier, when I found the carbies, there's also two carby kits. But um, I'm pretty sure of all these carbies. So whether this one's been rebuilt or another one, they don't look rebuilt, but they, the carby kits have been opened. So I don't really know. But yeah, I'll just have a look. I'll see which one looks best. And I'll just throw one of these carbies on. See how it goes. Okay. Come along for the journey.
clean up the uh, gasket surface a bit, try not to drop too much stuff down the intake manifold, because it'll end up in the engine. That's where the gasket wants to come up pretty easily. Hopefully in one of those Carby rebuild kits that I found, there might be a gasket sitting there. Just using a razor blade scraper, trying not to damage the alloy. Being used to looking at four barrel hollies, um, this is tiny, which you might expect with you know, five and six litre engines as opposed to a one litre engine. Clearly get a need less fuel. Less stops at the service station. Smaller fuel tank. Okay, I'll finish cleaning that up while you go and grab a cup of tea. Okay, there's another helicopter buzzes over. Um, unfortunately, no base gaskets in the kit. So, normally I'd have some gasket paper around and I could just knock a gasket out. Oh, wait, helicopter. But I haven't, so I'm going all rogue and I'm actually going to use the cardboard box from the gasket set. And you might say, what? What is he talking about? Okay, what am I talking about? So, all I'm going to do is cut a piece of this cardboard to about the size that I need. Nice sharp new Stanley blade. Just roughly. Just as long as it's big enough. And I will replace this later, you don't have to worry. I just want to get it running at the moment. And I'm going to hold that above the studs that are there for the carburetor and what I have done is pushed it down onto the studs where are we shadows not good not great I can't see a thing I've put four indentations in that by pushing it down and then I have some hole punches. Just going to get the appropriate size which looks to be probably about that. And I'm going to punch the holes in there. A slight camera angle change. So I'm simply going to, on my Datsun workbench, I'm going to get a hammer for starters. I am going to just punch those holes first and then what I'm going to do after I've done that is I am going to pop this down on top of the carburetor. I believe these are called a wad punch that I'm using. So I'm just going to sit that over the stud holes there. So you can see the cardboard is sitting there nicely. You can't see anything. Just push it over there. The cardboard is sitting over there quite nicely. And then I'm going to use my round side of my ball plane hammer just tap around the perimeter and the casting is cutting the edge for me. Fold 
down there, that's okay. You can see what I have. I've just cut that out. It's as simple as that. It's just using the ball pane hammer and the sharp casting mark there. Now I don't really care what the, what the shape of the outside is at this point, but might as well do the time thing. So if you've got gasket paper, and I always keep some in the cupboard because you never know when you need a gasket and you just haven't got one and there's no parts store open, you can just quickly whip them up. Or in this cup Not sure why, but my camera turned off. That's the finished product. So it's just a cardboard gasket. If you had gasket paper, you could do that. Um, before the camera turned off, I think that probably took no more than about three minutes to make. So it'll do the job. It'll get me out of trouble. I guess that all it is left to do now is to see if it works. A little bit of fuel running out the back. Yep, there's fuel running out. We'll see. Not as bad as the other one, surely. Let's see if we make it well, you saw everything. That was it. I bolted on. It is leaking fuel. I've got the uh, Gatorade bottle connected. I want to see whether it's running on the carb or whether it's going to suck fuel. I think it's about to run out, or maybe. I want to see if it's going to suck fuel through the from the Gatorade bottle. So far, I think it might be working. Okay, so I am going to, that's bizarre, the fan looks like it's barely turning on the video and in real it's actually turning flat out. Interesting. I'm going to move you to the back of the car and I'm going to hold this thing, let it warm up for a minute, and I'm going to hold it at about you know, 1500, maybe 2000 revs and see if any smoke comes out of the back. Um, that's one way to see whether the engine is warm. So, let's do that. Already I can see it's blowing a bit of um, water out the exhaust, and I guess that's not unusual, the thing's been sitting for a long time. Um, it could have a blown head gasket, uh, it could have uh, corroded head gaskets and so on. Depends how long it was sitting with water in it. Uh, that's not unusual, wouldn't be hard to do a head gasket on this, which I sort of intend to do. So, well, there's a bit of smoke coming through now, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold this on about 2000 RPM, and we'll just see how much smoke comes out and, and whether more water comes out.
watch it back on the video, but I can definitely see smoke. Um, there's smoke coming about everywhere. Um, so I can see some soot coming out. It may burn out, may burn off as well. But um, hey, the thing's running, it's idling. It's actually idling a little bit fast now. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Okay, so she's still idling. I don't think it's leaking fuel now. It might have been just where I spilled it. That's pretty good. That's what you call the cheap carby rebuild. Look at that fan. It looks like it's not moving. I can tell you, it's going flat out. Um, I just remembered I've got the bottom radiator hose undone, so I don't know that'll probably come off shortly. So I'm going to flush the cooling system anyway, so at least by doing this, um, it's moving water through the cooling system. When I flush it, okay, it'll be hot, but um, it should get out a fair bit of the junk as well, which there'll be junk. Thermostat has opened, so that's a good thing. Either it's stuck open or it's open, but it's, um, the radiator hose is hot. Let's see if the temperature gauge works. Not yet. No, no, you can't see that. Nice camera angle. No, no temperature gauge yet. It should be on, the fact that the thermostat's open. I think the fuel gauge has gone up since last. <laughs> what am I talking about? The fuel gauge hasn't gone up. Okay. I think it idles pretty well considering it's just a fold on. Personally, I reckon that's pretty impressive. And we're going to have a look at the back here. It's not blowing smoke now. There's a bit of smoke in the air, but it's not bellowing smoke out. I actually don't think this thing's going to be too bad. Might hold it on a couple of thousand revs again for a, a minute. And I'll point the camera at the back there and we'll see what happens. smoke there when I give it a bit of a rev. Smoke or steam, I'm not sure what it is. I think my Gatorade fuel tank is about to run out. Okay, well I'm going to call that a video, but what I'm going to do is I am going to flush the cooling system. I'm going to um, put some stuff back in the back of it, clean up the footpath, and that'll be that. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I've been thrilled. Just to give you a little bit of background, I bought this car six days ago. I polished it over a couple of nights, which I haven't shown you that at this stage. I've done a bit of polish, not all of it, just to see how the paint was going to come up. And other than that, the mechanical, the only mechanical work I've done on it is today. I started at about nine o'clock and it's now about five o'clock and I've pretty much worked on it all day long. But you've seen what I've done. This will probably be a pretty long video. One day, one day to get it running and all the electricals working. All I've got to do now is look at the brakes, suspension and steering. The brakes will need rebuilding, I have no idea about the steering. Um, and other than a lens for that indicator and a little bit of rust, this thing's probably ready for rego. And on that, it's just about to run out of fuel. Well, there you go. It's almost time to go and do some sick skids in this thing. Or maybe not. Nah, I think what we'll do next is um, we'll jack the back wheels up. We will check out if the clutch is any good, gearbox is any good, diff's any good. We might as well see if the thing's going to drive. And once we've got that sorted out, then probably after that we'll jump onto the brakes, I think. But in between time, we might do a little bit of polish here and there. So there's episodes to come. So keep coming back for more. And again, if you like this stuff, or if you, if you know someone that might like this type of video content, please share with them, let them know. I make this for you, I make it for me, I enjoy it, so hopefully other people enjoy it as well. Let me know in your comments. Is there something you want to see? 
As you know, I'm normally not a Datsun Japanese car kind of a car builder, but hey, it's fun and I needed something to do. So glad you're watching. Follow along. See you again soon. Take care.